Welcome back to Cross Tactics. Today I'm going to chat a little bit about the crossbow string. So this is obviously the string for the 80 pound crossbows and you can see there I've got um, some wear happening. So this is the serving coming off of the string. So there's no actual damage to the string. It's just the serving it wraps around it. Okay. So the serving is specifically there to protect, to protect the string and um, to be a launching platform for your um, for your bolt so that's what connects to the knock so you'll see it's not actually where where it connects to the knock or where it connects to the back of the bolt where there's damage it's where it's running on the rail the whole time okay and that's unavoidable so about after 600 to 700 shots you're going to start seeing that damage on your string um, if you want to I mean it can happen earlier if you want to prevent it from happening earlier just uh, take relatively good care of your string. Watch out that it doesn't go rubbing up on edges or um, falling or sliding along things, etc. And um, you can redo the serving on these strings um, if you want to build yourself a little jig and um, get the same material and redo it. Um, but they're not that expensive to buy the strings to replace it. So um, I would say as a consumable, as far as consumables go for these sorts of things, for these sorts of products, it's not um, as bad after about 600 or so shots. Um, it's going to seem like, if you've got the magazine system on it, that the string obviously wears out quicker, but it's just because you're shooting more bolts, you're shooting more rounds, putting more shots to it. Um, I mean, it's addictive. Once you <laughs> load up, once you shoot, you want to keep going. So. Um, obviously, in a shooting session, you're going to shoot out a lot more bolts than um, if you were using it in a single shot mode. Uh, there's just no way around that. So, um, today I'm going to be replacing it. I've got a video on my channel where I use like a shoelace, me shoelace uh, method to, um, to replace the string. So, I, you know, loop, uh, tie some knots and, and uh, loop it around the the prod and then around my feet and use it to um, straighten my back and use my body's power to actually bend the bow and then put the string on but you can also use a stringer so it's also just a secondary string basically um, a little bit longer than your um, crossbow string so that you can loop it over here over that um, that edge there okay so that's where your your actual string is sitting in front of it and that's where that goes and then uh, you just put it on this on the other side too and you're actually going to use the self cocking system so you're going to depress the button as you would to load it Okay, firstly, you're going to want to get this string over these um, rubber rubber string stoppers and grabbers. You're going to want to pop it over like that so that those uh, things are now behind it. Okay, and you're going to depress this button. Okay, now it's going to want to, everything's going to want to slide loose. Okay, because now this is loose. And this is going to want to fall too. Just put it back on. Let it sort of grab it a little bit. Make sure it stays on. So there you can see it started slipping off. So put it back on. Make sure it stays on that rig. Um, now with this hanging on it and giving a bit of um, bit of tension. It's easier to position them correctly. Okay, and now once they're on properly and you are sure it's not going to slip off, then you go ahead and complete the cocking action. Right? So now it's cocked um, as if it would be with a, with a normal string. Now you can see your string is loose. The actual crossbow string is loose. So like we did with the shoelace method, 
and you just pop your string off through the loop pop it out through the loop something this one okay so now it's like this and you got your string off Okay, I'm going to put it aside for a second and then get the string. So, this brand is covered up by the sticker right now. Um, I actually, it just says Archery Accessories. Um, I don't know what brand it is, but look out for this label. Um, if you're in South Africa and you're going to buy um, these 80 pound crossbow strings, because this is the better brand because it gives you two end caps um, that are like the one that's on on my crossbow so um, if you ever have to replace your end caps you get two with it there are other brands that also give you end caps but they're not these um, so the other end caps won't be able to to work with this um, stringing system um, you'll have to use the shoelace, shoelace method for that um, like I show in my other video so um, Go ahead and cut it open. I guess I could have done this off camera. Oops, there goes the uh, end caps. But anyway, I'm just after the string. So if you want to put some uh, some more tension in the string, you can twist it a little bit before you put it on the crossbow. That gives it a little. It makes it a little bit shorter and sort of gives it a bit more tension. Um, there's already wax on these strings. They always come pre-waxed, so. Um, and I doubt the wax will actually dry up before, or dry up completely before um, you, or before the lifespan of the string runs out and starts um, coming undone anyway. So, um, yeah, I don't think you re really need string wax, um, which is something I wouldn't have said uh, about two years ago or so. Um, but I think people overuse, and I, I was one of them, overuse um, string wax. It's, it's, it becomes more of, a, more of an issue than a, a benefit when, you're, when the wax starts gunking up in, your, in the crossbow and stuff. So people think you have to keep applying the wax. You honestly don't. You don't even need wax. You don't even need to own wax um, if you're going to be replacing the strings when they, when they run out. Maybe if you're going to be making your own strings, um, that's a good thing to, to invest in. Anyway, okay, I'm going to put the string on. Okay, so now obviously this is on the this is on that ridge, right? The string. So you want to get your crossbow string onto this. See those grooves there? Okay. Now once again going to put it through the loops okay so I'm going to position this one there on it like that and then push it through the loop okay and through this side so you can see what I'm doing there all right so now it comes to this side and Go. Yeah. You can see it's still relatively loose. It's just these the, these things keep their shape, so it's it's hard to get it over this nub, um, just like when you string up your crossbow. Um, you get it. These things are hard. You can see it keeps its shape there. But once it's um, tensioned onto the bow, it'll start conforming to the shape of that um, end cap okay so now you have it like this this is still cocked up now you don't want to um, dry fire it so you don't just want to pull uh, pull the trigger what you're going to do is you're going to do exactly the same thing 
that you do that I showed you when you want to decock it after you've um, loaded up a, a bolt but you didn't want to actually shoot it so you um, want to decock it without shooting um, so you're going to put this against your so I moved this the main string out of the way again <clears throat> brought this all the way back to the secondary stringer or the secondary string that you got on there right and now I'm going to just con do a control release once again keep my fingers away from that area do a control release Now you just want to get this again back over those rubber pieces. You can pop your stringer off. There you go. Stringer's back on, sitting properly, ready to put a new magazine on and carry on. So, like I said, this was about um, plus minus 600 shots. For my calculations um, on the test model so that's about the lifespan of your strings and um, I will do a video in the future on how to make uh, your own string and, and all of that I'm just uh, getting all my ducks in a row so to speak when it comes to that okay thank you for watching